and we're going to leave it the way it is as default. I'm going to cancel out of here and now I am going to delete this wall and I'm going to delete this wall instead of going to the menu I'm just going to do a single left click on this wall highlights it blue delete on my keyboard makes it go away okay we are going to edit this wall real quick here because I need to change it just a little bit so we're going to attributes I need to change the height of the wall from 96 to 40.5 for a raised bar so there we go 40.5 inches tall now okay now let's take a look at our zone because we're basically ready to start placing cabinets this line all the way around the outside of my cabinets this guy right here this is my placement zone any cabinet I drop inside of this line is going to snap up to the wall the first thing I want to place in this design is a window so I've come over here I've clicked on window and I've opened up my architectural elements uh, window here so I am going to choose windows and I am going to choose a casement window without a grid and I think I'm going to choose this guy right here and here he pops up here so you got a nice image of him you can see what we're placing if you move your mouse into this window hold down your left mouse button I'm sorry your right mouse button I don't know my rights for my lefts never have and move your mouse you can rotate that okay so I'm just gonna click <clears throat> click on place you'll notice now that my mouse has turned to a crosshair that means one of two things either there's a function tied to it or there's an item tied to it in this case I have an item now remember I said just anywhere inside the placement zone I'm just for demonstration purposes usually I'm over here dropping this in but I'm gonna drop it right out here and you'll see it snaps right to the wall once it's dropped on the wall if you don't click because I've done a single left click if you don't click on your mouse you can move it back and forth notice in my product navigator over here these dimensions change as I move the mouse so I'm just gonna set the mouse out here and I'm gonna do a I'm just gonna drop it right there the window uh, selector pops back up this is great if I need another window or a door I don't so I'm just gonna hit cancel I do however want this window centered on the wall so I'm gonna right click on the w window I'm going to choose the window and then I'm gonna come down here to center and I'm gonna click on the wall and there we have it centered on the wall now that I've added something you'll notice my dimensions are off the screen again zoom to fit narrows me back down so everything's back on the screen okay so we're ready to place cabinets there's two ways to place cabinets we can drag them off the off the um, actually there's three ways to place cabinets when I really think about it. we can drag them from the tree we can click on our cabinet icon up here that opens up a cabinet selector window I don't use this window um, honestly I don't know many people that do it's exactly the same thing as we have over here so you can certainly place cabinets from here but I find it much easier to place them from here and then I don't have this little window in my way so I'm gonna hit cancel and now I'm gonna come down here and I am going to start with a base cabinet so I chose my base cabinet I want a corner base cabinet so I chose my corner base cabinet here and I want a base easy reach basic whoops I'm in Armstrong I'm in the wrong catalog it's very important that you design in the right catalog and we're going to design out a sample catalog for this design so sample catalog is now open I'm going to choose my base cabinet I knew it was too easy over there there wasn't nearly enough options <laughs> choose my base cabinet and I want uh, base corner cabinets this guy right here and I want a square corner cabinet and I want a square corner sink base no square corner recycling center no Susan yes yeah, super Susan here we go let's choose that guy okay we're gonna do a 36 L here when you first place a cabinet you will get this message you are starting this design with sample catalog so confirm that and and really that comes up to when you start a new or when you're in a, an existing design if you place from a different catalog that window comes back and says hey you're placing from a different catalog do you really want to do this that'll save your tail end trust me it saved mine more than once 
Okay, so I've got my two base cabinets set in here. Now I'm going to show you the other way to find a cabinet. You can come over here to Find, which we were in Catalog, and now we're in Find, and just start typing in the cabinet name. In this case, I've got two cabinets up there. I know what the nomenclature is, so I'm going to type SS after you put in your first two letters or numbers it'll start pulling up items with those letters or numbers in it. As you enter more, it narrows down the list. So there we have it. And again, in our info window up here, we can rotate this guy. We can switch him back over by double clicking to the uh, spec book view. And double clicking again brings them back up. And you know, I want to just take, I'm going to scoot this guy over here just to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. I'm going to come back to my catalog. And I do have a few more cabinets to place here. So we'll get started doing that. I'm going to base corner cabinets. I want a base 9 left. I'm going to stick right here. I want a base 18 left. I'm going to stick right out here. And now, from here, we're going to start looking at the cabinet features. So to look at our cabinet features, we're going to start with base 18. And I'm just going to highlight it here. First one I'm going to hit, we're just going to run down through the list, so drag. Pretty self-explanatory. I click drag. It drags it along my wall or along my placement zone. I'm going to drop it right there with a single left click. We're going to right click in here again. Go to attribute, not attributes, move move. Now you'll notice that my cursor is now a crosshair and if you remember if your cursor is a crosshair then there's either an item or a function tied to it. In this case we know it's an item because I chose to move this base 18. So I can take this base 18 and I can click it over here and you'll notice it snaps right against the wall in front of the cabinets in the right place. We're going to go over here to move again. I'm going to move it out here onto my screen, my middle of my screen and this is just a single left click. Now it's tied to my mouse, so wherever I move my mouse, it goes with me. If in this function I do a right click, I change over to rotate. Rotates around as I move my mouse. Right click again, goes to, mount, to move. Right click again, rotate. And move. If I right click again, left click, left click places. We'll go back to right click, rotate, pretty self-explanatory. You click rotate, move your mouse, cabinet rotates. 45 clockwise, automatic, makes it easy, 45 counterclockwise. Um, in, out, up, down, we got to move our cabinet for those two. Move, move it back over here. Now. I, I clicked move, I did a single click in here, another single left click will place this cabinet wherever I choose to place it, or if I know I want it three inches from the end wall here, look over here on my info panel, you see we've got left, center, and right, right now it's 67 inches to the left, and not 67 inches from the edge of that cabinet to the left, but if I only want it three inches from that end wall, I just delete that, three inches, enter on my keyboard, voila. Okay, in out, pretty self-explanatory on that one too. You click in out, it moves it in and out. If you are in out and right click, it will move you into drag. And then right click again to in out and left click to place. Position, let's see, in out, up, down, that's our next one. Up, down, pretty self-explanatory, tells you where the cabinet's going to be in the design. In this case, bottom is zero. That's That distance is the bottom of the cabinet to the floor. Zero, obviously, it's a base cabinet sitting on the floor. Now you notice the top distance is 61 and a half. That measurement is from the top of the cabinet to the bottom of the ceiling. So if you take our 34 and a half inch tall cabinet, add 61 and a half inches to that, you end up with a 96 inch wall height. So you just go in here and enter, enter the distance or the height you want. Hit enter on your keyboard, and away you go. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Click escape to get out of that function. 
All right, that was up, down, center. We've looked at center, position. If I want this cabinet positioned a certain distance from this cabinet, I simply go click position. I'm going to select my cabinet here. 15 and 13 16 is what it tells me the distance is. 15 and 13 16 is what it tells me the distance is, so I know that's correct. 30 inches, enter on my keyboard, and it's automatically moved me over 30 inches. We'll right click on it again, and fit. To do the fit, we're going to have to do a little drag. So we're going to come in, we're going to do drag. To drag it right over here. Actually, I probably should use position for this. Use it like the function was meant to be used. Hey, look at that. Okay, I'm going to set this at 16 inches. Okay. Now, if I want to fit a cabinet in here on my 16 inches, I'm going to copy this catalog to start with. Kills one more function here. So here's my catalog, or my catalog, my cabinet. Now I'm going to move this cabinet, and I want to place it right here. Oh, it didn't place, it just got it snapped over there. And I'm going to demonstrate that with a cabinet not sitting there next to it. So let's move. I'm going to click here. You see it popped it here. That's the next available space because 16 inches and 18 is just not going to fit. Or will it? We're going to come down here, we're going to click fit. And I'm going to click in the space. So you can make 18 inches fit in a 16 inch hole. You can't go the other way. You can't make 18 inches or 16 inches fit in an 18 inch hole without a little overlap. But you can go this way. Now, this is really cool for designing. It's really